Hello everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you how to apply something called Horner's method, or sometimes the Ruffini-Horner algorithm. And I'll tell you a little bit about why we use it. I'm not going to go into a derivation of the method, right? really explain why it works. Uh, we'll maybe make another video for that. This is just applying it. Uh, I'm going to use a little table to do it, uh, which is of my own design. Maybe you can come up with an even faster uh, way to do it, and I'd love to hear about it if you can. So uh, the way we'll do this is just through some examples. So for our first example, uh, here's what we want to do. So say I'm given some polynomial, and since I specifically have in mind uh, functions which are showing up after applying a Laplace transform, I'm going to use the variable s, but it doesn't matter. So say I had s cubed plus 3s squared plus 3s plus 1. And you might recognize that as s plus 1 cubed, but that's beside the point for, for now. And what I would like to do is rewrite this expression, and maybe I'll give a name to this. Maybe we'll call this f of s. I want to rewrite f in terms of, say, I don't know, s minus 2. Okay, Meaning, I want to write down a polynomial in s minus 2 rather than s but which is still equal to f of s, so that if I distribute everything, I, I reduce it down to s cubed plus 3s squared plus 3s plus 1. And it turns out that the Ruffini-Horner algorithm is very, very easy to apply and, uh, and then able to solve this problem almost immediately. So here's what we do. We're going to write down the coefficients of this polynomial. So we have 1, 3, 3, 1. That'll be the, the top of my table. And then on the side, I just take the root of what I'm trying to write in terms of, right? So in this case, the root is 2. So I'm just going to put that over here. And it's mostly just so that I know exactly what this, this root was. I just write it there. Okay, now I have four numbers along the top. And so what I'm going to do is copy whatever this number is. Here it's a 1. I'm going to copy it down four times. I'll circle the bottom just to let myself know that's where it ends. And then I'm going to draw a little guideline here. Because what I'm going to do is fill in this table with numbers, and I don't want to go below this line. All right, so here's how we're going to do it. So first, I take 2, I multiply it by this number 1, and add 3. And so we get 2 times 1 plus 3. And of course, this is equal to 5. All right, next, 2 times 1 plus 5. So we get 2 times 1 plus 5. And of course, this is equal to 7. And then the last number in the column, we do 2 times 1 plus 7. So 2 times 1 plus 7, which is equal to 9. OK, so I circle the 9. That's going to be the end of my second column. All right, I proceed again into the third column. Only now, instead of 2 times 1, right, in each of these different positions, I'm going to be multiplying by the second column. So I'm going to do 2 times 5 plus 3. So 2 times 5 plus 3. And of course, this is 13. Then for this bottom number, I'm going to have 2 times 7 plus 13, which is 27. All right, I'll circle my 27, so I know I've gotten to the bottom. And then finally, this last position, I do 2 times 13 plus 1. So 2 times 13 plus 1, which is also 27. And just for completeness, I'll circle this one. And so the circled numbers are going to give us the coefficients for f in terms of s minus 2. So this f of s, which we've written up above just in terms of s, we can now write as s minus 2 cubed plus 9 times s minus 2 squared plus 27 times s minus 2 plus 27. And if you don't believe it, of course, you can verify by distributing. All right, so let's take a look at another example, maybe uh, oh, maybe a little more complicated one. 
So our second example, what we're going to do is actually start with a function, maybe we'll call this g of s, which is already shifted, right? The second one we shifted to be written in terms of s minus 2. Well, let's start with one which, which actually is already shifted. So maybe it's already written in terms of s minus 1. So here we'll have s minus 1 to the fourth plus twice s minus 1 squared minus 4 times s minus 1 plus 2. And our goal here is to rewrite in terms of, well, how about s plus 2? So we're going to proceed just like before. We're going to write the coefficients down. So we'll have 1. And oh, well, you'll notice we're missing a cubic term. So we do want to keep track of that. So we're going to have a 0 here. Then we'll have a 2, a negative 4, and a negative 2. All right, now the big question is, is what number goes over here on the left? And the idea here is to check what is the root on the left and what is the root on the right. So here the root would be 1, and here the root would be negative 2. How far do I have to go to get from 1 down to negative 2? The answer is negative 3, and that's the number I use here. Okay, there are five numbers along the top, so I'm going to just copy my 1 five times. And I'll circle the bottom <coughs> and give myself a guideline. Okay, I do negative 3 times 1 plus 0, which is negative 3. Negative 3 times 1 plus negative 3 is negative 6. Hey, you start to notice a pattern. Negative 9, negative 12. All right, I move over. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9, plus 2 is 11. Negative 3 times negative 6 is 18, plus 11 is 29. Negative 3 times negative 9 is 27, plus 29 is 56. Okay, fourth column. Negative 3 times 11 is negative 33, minus 4 is negative 37. Negative 3 times 29 is negative 87, and then subtract another negative 37, and we get negative 124. And then finally, negative 3 times negative 37, that's 111, and then minus uh, 2, which actually should be a plus 2, uh, is 113. Okay, and so we can now rewrite our g of s in terms of s plus 2 as s plus 2 to the fourth power. We are going to get a cubic now. In fact, there'll be minus 12 of them. So minus 12 s plus 2 cubed plus 56 s plus 2 squared minus 124 s plus 2 and then plus 113. Okay, so this is how we can apply Horner's method to allow us to shift the input of our polynomial. And let me give you one more example that actually shows this in practice. So I'm going to make another video where we apply this in the situation of some partial fractions. But here I want to show you one that uses something called Eisen, the Eisenstein criterion. So let's say I was given the polynomial, and maybe we'll call it h this time, uh, s cubed minus 2s squared plus 3s minus 9. And my goal is to show that h is irreducible. Now, one of the most excellent uh, irreducibility criterion is called the Eisenstein criterion. Right, so the Eisenstein criterion asks you to find a prime number which divides the constant coefficient, but whose square does not. Right, so 5 was your prime. 5 would have to divide the constant term, but 5 squared should not. And if that prime also divides the other coefficients other than the leading one, right? So we don't want it to divide the leading coefficient. But if it divides everything else, and it doesn't divide the constant coefficient uh, twice, right? It doesn't, the square of it doesn't divide it. Then your polynomial is irreducible. Okay, now 
the cool news, right, is that that's a great criterion. The, the sad news is that it doesn't apply here. There's only one prime that divides 9, and that's 3. And sadly, 3 squared, which is 9, divides 9. So we cannot apply Eisenstein directly to this polynomial. However, there's a standard trick for enlarging the applicability of the Eisenstein criterion, which is to note that if you translate a polynomial and it's still irreducible, then the original, or if it's irreducible after you translate, then the original polynomial also has to be irreducible. So what I want to do is, is rewrite this in terms of something else so that the coefficients do satisfy Eisenstein's criterion. Okay. So let's do the following. I'm going to write down the coefficients. So 1, negative 2, 3, and negative 9. And I'm going to rewrite in terms of, well, in this case, I'm going to write in terms of s plus 1. So I'm going to put a negative 1 here. Okay. So there's four numbers, so I'm going to copy 1 down four times. I'll put my guideline up, and here we go. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Minus 2 is negative 3. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Minus 3 is negative 4. Ah, I see the pattern. That'll be a negative 5. Okay, moving over. Negative 1 times negative 3 is 3. Plus 3 is 6. Negative 1 times negative 4 is 4. Plus 6 is 10. And then finally, negative 1 times 6 is negative 6. Minus 9 is negative 15. And so this means that our h of s can be rewritten as s plus 1 cubed minus 5 s plus 1 squared plus 10 s plus 1 minus 15. Now, this constant coefficient is divisible by both 3 and 5. But 3 doesn't go into 10, so that's not going to work. But 5, aha, 5 goes into 15. It doesn't go in twice, though, right? 5 squared is 25. 5 does go into 10. 5 does go into 5. And we don't have a 5 in here, which makes us happy. So by Eisenstein, so by the Eisenstein criterion with p equals to 5, h is irreducible. Now, you might legitimately ask, why did I write down negative 1 here and not some other number? And the truth is, of course, I'm, I'm hiding right some of the grunt work I did. For example, the first thing I tried was using a 1. Right? But you can see very quickly what happens. So 1 times 1 is 1, plus negative 2 is negative 1. 1 plus negative 1 is 0, 1 plus 0 is 1. Okay, and I can stop immediately because this isn't divisible by any prime, right? So that's not going to work. Um, and, okay, maybe I started with 1, then I tried negative 1, and it worked. I was happy. Uh, of course, you could put in an arbitrary value here, k, and fill out this table, and it's going to maybe get a little gross, okay? But you can do it, and maybe that's how you can even discover these for yourself. All right, so this is how we can use Horner's method uh, in, a, in a pretty fast way. Uh, once, you know, you're not explaining it out loud, uh, you'll find you can zip through these tables very, very quickly and, and apply this to uh, allow you to rewrite your polynomials in terms of a shifted variable. Uh, if you try to do this by brute force, you're going to find that you can do it, but it takes a lot longer to do it. Okay, uh, look forward to another video where I show how to apply Horner's method to a partial fraction situation, which is pretty complicated. All right, have a wonderful day.